Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matty with the Toasty Bros, and today we are kicking it back old school with a $250 gaming PC. It's a legendary PC build, the Dell Optiplex, that we're gonna be upgrading with a graphics card that we actually bought and made this PC only $250. Don't believe us? Well, stay tuned. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Antec, the makers of some of the best budget cases on the market. Some of our favorite cases from Antec are as follows. First up, the NX200M, which is their budget-friendly micro-ATX case with mesh ventilation and great build quality, and supports up to a 240mm radiator at the front and an MSRP of $49.99. Secondly, the NX410, which is a great mid-tower featuring three RGB fans and great airflow, with an MSRP of $64.99. And lastly, the DF700 Flux, which is their ultimate thermal performing gaming case featuring their Flux Airflow technology, full mesh front with three ARGB fans. Use the link down below to pick up any of these cases, or you can enter a giveaway we are hosting for the DF700 Flux. That link will be in the description as well. The giveaway is US only. Special thanks again to Antec for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get into the video, shall we? So we actually have the receipt right here, which hopefully doesn't have our shipping address on it. It actually did, but you can't probably can't see it, right? Uh, we paid under a hundred dollars for this 7020 that has a fourth gen i5 in it. Eight gigs of RAM and I believe a 500 gig hard drive also included. We're not gonna be using that as the boot drive because we have an SSD and graphics card. But the main thing I wanted to do here was, well, I saw this really good deal. And also a while back, we picked up a couple of graphics cards off of AliExpress. And this being an RX 460, not an amazing card, but but on the used market right now, on like eBay, you're gonna be paying upwards of like $200 normally for those cards. So being able to pick this thing up at around 100 bucks makes for a, well, $250 PC, makes it very possible. So how we not waste any more time, talk more about this computer, how it looks, because it's gonna need some cleaning before we build in it. And then also just show you guys how you can build this thing at home. All right, what we got inside? So inside of this 7020 with the convenient handle, this is a very dusty system, which we will be cleaning. We have, Let's see, it looks like two, yep, two four gig sticks of RAM. So we do have dual channel, good on the seller for that. Um, stock Intel cooler with the i5-4590 underneath it, which is a pretty good quad core processor. Uh, what kind of power supply? We have a 290 watt power supply, which will be plenty for this 460, which does require, it looks like a six pin power. So we got this, SATA to six pin adapter. And looky here, we got an extra SATA. It's probably gonna be a little bit of a stretch because it's gonna have to go from here to like here, so I think it'll reach. Um, just a basic motherboard, it actually does have a removable IO shield. Uh, however, you are going to be stuck with this power supply because it's pretty proprietary. So I mean, I guess if you wanted to case swap this, you could do some modding and probably try. And let's see what hard drive we got, because I know Matt was a little bit unsure, but oh, we think it's sure 500. Things. Wiped. It's been wiped. wiped. It's been wiped. And it looks like we have a 500 gig um, hard drive. It's a Seagate, so that's awesome. Um, adding in the SSD is gonna be really easy because we can actually still use this hard drive, which is nice because we have an extra SATA right there. You just have to buy a SATA cable and you're good to go. Only thing we might have to do is, do we have an extra, we have another extra SATA power up here that we can use. Uh -huh. I was gonna say, we might have to unplug the CD drive, but I mean, who really uses that anyway, so. CD drives are for schmucks. Schmucks, but uh, yeah, let me talk about the upgrades real quick. Hello. <laughs> okay, but the graphics card right here, this is an XFX RX 460. Now, there's nothing super special about it. We did buy on AliExpress right at $100. Price may vary, of course, given the market right now. But in terms of the display out, we have DisplayPort, HDMI, and DVI, so three displays out. Um, as Jackson mentioned, this does require six pin power, but for the most part, most 460s don't require any external power. So this extra power that it's pulling is gonna be very minimal. It's probably just because this is like a OC version, so maybe an extra like 30 watts at most, and SATA power can easily handle that. If you're doing like a really high-end card, you might not want to run off SATA power because, well, the power supply is not really meant to do that, but it will work in this use case because this is a lower wattage card, but it should be great for playing games like Fortnite, uh, Valorant, all your eSports titles. We'll try some higher-end games, but I'll be honest with you, probably not gonna run very well. It is a $250 PC in 2021, but I have some decent expectations for it. And as Jackson mentioned, we're gonna be adding an SSD. This is a very basic A data SSD. Any sort of two and a half inch SSD upgrade brings a lot of life to older systems like this. So regardless of it being a, well, pretty decent gaming rig, it's gonna be great for just general use because it's gonna have an SSD with Windows installed. So yeah, pretty easy. Uh, what we're gonna do first though, as Jackson man mentioned, I really don't pay attention when I record him. Uh, we have, well, a kind of dusty boy. We might wanna go take it to our uh, PC selling shop, pcbros.tech, hit it with the air compressor real quick, 
clean it up to make sure it's at peak performance and then come back in here and show you guys how we can, well, you know, upgrade it. All right, we are outside and uh, we got a beautiful air compressor. You could do the same thing with compressed air if you want to like a can of compressed air, but it's more cost effective to invest in a uh, air compressor if you want to do this a lot. Blow it out. You can also get a lot more PSI out of this. I think, I think canned air can usually do up to like 30 PSI. This can do 125. That's a lot. So you gotta be careful. What a psa. Yeah. It's like breaking the dust into pieces. It's a windy day too. It's just naturally you know, is, cleaning it. This is pretty up there in terms of what we've cleaned. Like this is, it's pretty impressive how much is in here. <laughs> like it's still coming. <laughs> The only downside with our compressor is it's small. So you gotta, gotta give it a minute to fill up. Yeah, the wind's really helping too. Oh, huh? Thank just, you, wind. Just taking it out for us. Appreciate it. This object looks actually in really good shape. It's hard to find mid towers that are in good shape because uh, in shipping, they get really beat up because they weigh a lot more. Um, so that's the downside with mid towers is they typically cost more because they're more upgradable and they're heavier. So it's just harder to ship them because they weigh so much. Definitely replace the thermal paste on yes. this. That'll probably give us some some newfound life uh, in terms of performance. Ooh, oh my god! Kind of big. Oh, there it is. I haven't even done the power supply yet. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Will we get mesothelioma from this? Yes, probably. Do I really know what that is? No. I don't really know much about nothing. Much about nothing. You do want to be careful whenever you're blowing out systems. Don't let the fans spin a whole lot because sometimes they'll spin faster than the RPM they're rated for and they'll your blowout bearing is a max. You know how to blow things out, bro? Yeah. Right. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, Thermal paste change and I think we'll be good for upgrades. God, there's another. It just keeps coming. All right, I'm That's calling fine. it. That's good. What do you need to do this upgrade, Jackson? Well, um, things that you need, I would definitely say is thermal paste, but um, we recommend getting like alcohol swabs or rubbing alcohol. Um, WD-40 can kind of work as well. You're also going to need a screwdriver of some sort. Uh, these are usually always just Phillips. And um, I really recommend doing opposing corners uh, for both loosening and tightening, uh, because you gotta remember the CPU is under a lot of pressure from these springs, so you don't wanna just, you know, loosen one end completely at a time. Uneven pressure. Yeah, you don't want that uneven pressure on a CPU. That's how you get some bent pins. We know all about bent pins here. Oh yeah, we bend all the pins. Not on purpose though. Yeah, not usually. Not usually. It's always fun to see what the pace looks like though, because you never know. I mean, this is a uh, pretty old, ooh, that's bad. Right, so yeah, look rough. at the spread. So the first thing you notice is you see the cracking. Cracking means it's extremely dry. Um, I mean, some of the thermal paste is still on here, but I mean, that's it's a pretty rough spread. It's definitely not good. So that'll get a nice close-up shot of me cleaning off the CPU. We can confirm also that the CPU is actually an i5, because that'd be fun, wouldn't it, if it was like a Pentium? Yeah, we'll find out. We got this from Goodwill, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it was actually uh, listed on Goodwill's eBay. They have an eBay, apparently, and they have computers. Now, you don't have to be perfect with cleaning up thermal paste. I know some people go like all out. It really wouldn't be a bad idea to grab your air compressor now and uh, blow off like any of the little chunks that are on there, but it definitely is an i5-4590. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off. Um, probably really shouldn't do it over <laughs> the case. I'm gonna do it over the floor so that it gets like swept up later. But I'm really not gonna worry about getting like the edges super clean because this is because it's gone outside of the CPU die. So as long as we just get like the inside cleaned really well, we will be good to go. And I'm gonna good call that to good go. enough. It's good to go. I mean, honestly, anything is going to be better than uh, how it was before. So we're using really overkill paste, MX5, but really anything will work just fine. But you know what, we want- Put the... five gallons. Ooh, this stuff is like a whole different color and texture. Oh, the blue stuff, yeah. Yeah, I like it. That's, that really is Arctic. That was probably way too much thermal paste, by the way. Um, but it's better to have a little bit too much than, you know, too little. So we'll go ahead and plug this back in first. We'll just set it down on top of the CPU. And now here's where the opposing corners, you know, come into play, especially, because it's actually really hard to do if you don't do this. Now, one part that's really cool about the system being a fourth gen rather than like a second gen is you do get um, USB 3. It looks like we have two in the back and then uh, two up front. So that's a, that's a really big advantage because if you're trying to do VR or anything, um, you're really not gonna really do that if you get like a second or first gen 
Intel system. So there's a lot of like modern things that these had that's really nice. Now, if you really want to go even newer, go with the six gen or up system because then you get DDR4 RAM um, and even more upgradability. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the SSD now that we've gotten that squared away. This is the 240 gig SSD. Um, so what do you think? Do you just want to put this in and place the hard drive or do you actually want to just do it exactly how we would do Yeah, understood how we do it. So we right. need another SATA cable. Yep. I'm gonna grab a Sabre cable. Show you a cable. A we'll leave links to all the extra stuff down below, like thermal paste and everything. We wanna make sure you have it. It's always good to have that sort of stuff on hand whenever you're upgrading PCs. We plan on doing this for other people. Um, so yeah, SATA cable is pretty easy to get. We have a ton of them here, so I mean. Yes, we have a stupid amount. So and plug this in, I just grabbed a random one. Um, I am going to actually swap, this probably has Windows 10 on it. I really, okay. Probably. So it probably did come with Windows 10. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just swap the hard drive to SATA one. Um, and then the blue is going to be SATA zero. The reason we're doing this, cause SATA zero is typically your main drive. And then the other one is like your, your secondary storage. Um, really, you don't even have to like, uh, actually screw this in anywhere, but there definitely is a lot of screw points. Like what I would probably do, if I can get it in there, I mean, really that's actually really in there. So for the video purpose and this not taking too long, look at that. That's Easy. really all you need for an SSD because I mean, honestly, it's pretty hidden. It's not gonna move around. SSDs have no moving parts. So I don't have to worry about them um, getting, you know, they're basically shock proof. You don't have to worry about them like dropping or anything because uh, they're gonna be fine. So now Matt is going to show you guys how to do the final piece of the puzzle, which is installing the graphics card. I can't do it. You can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, because as we mentioned, there is no six pin power on this power supply, is use this little handy dandy adapter. This is a SATA to six pin. Again, use this with kind of, oh, caution. Let's see if I can, I should be able to rip this open. Yeah. Um, you don't wanna use this on like a super high end graphics card that could pour, pull more wattage than it should, but it's very straightforward. We take the same connector that we use for the SSD, which we actually have a spare one right here. We're gonna go ahead and run with this one because, well, we're gonna try it. Um, if you really don't need to use the CD ROM, I'd recommend like unplugging that one. Uh, just so you can have a better cable run that's a little bit better. Um, this uh, this might reach, I don't know, we'll find out. <laughs> know. Um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and install the graphics card. All you have to do, see this little blue tab right here? It's gonna push that in and it's gonna pull out like so. This is actually a lot easier than some like building your own PC most of the time. Most of the time. And as you can see, there's these PCI covers. What we're gonna do is install this graphics card in the blue slot. So we just gotta make sure we have enough room. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be close. It's gonna be close, I'm just kidding, it's not that close. Uh, we're gonna remove these two because as we just noticed with the test fitment, you guys probably didn't notice, but we're gonna take off these bad boys so we can have access to the video out right there. What you wanna do is maneuver it in like this, nice and sneakily. It's my new word, sneakily. Trade Smart Schmeagle. Okay, and we line it up with that slot and all we have to do from here is push down with even force and it should click in just like so. And with this, uh, unlike building your own PC, most time you screw this down, all you have to do is use this to basically, maybe. You might need to push the front of the card down. There, that, I think that's yeah. better. All right, that should be good. Oh, there we go, okay, there, <laughs> nice. Okay, yours might come a little bit better than ours did, uh, but it is clicked in, it's nice and locked in, and all we gotta do is take that nice six pin, which, you know what, I'm unplugging that. I just, it's not long enough. So unfortunately can't use this uh, CD-ROM, but again, who really wants to use that nowadays? So we'll go ahead and plug it into this one like so, and then take that six pin power, plug it in right here, and then just move it off to the side so it's not getting in any fans. You don't wanna turn on your PC and have it get stuck in your CPU fan or this fan right here. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much ready to go. We can boot this thing up. If you did install the SSD into SATA zero like we did, there will not be Windows installed. So what you wanna do is install Windows, Windows 10. Uh, use our sponsor, GBG Mall, obviously, use uh, to get the Windows 10 key if you wanna get a discount, or you can go to PC Bros and get a Windows boot uh, drive. Yeah, ready to go with the key. So that's a good resource as well. But um, yeah, should be pretty simple to do. We're gonna load this thing up and uh, see how it performs in some games. Yeehaw! All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this $250 gaming PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about a couple benchmarks real quick. Now we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Fortnite, Chivalry 2, Apex Legends, Rainbow Six Siege, and Valorant. Now first up on Fortnite in performance mode, we averaged around 100 plus FPS. We did experience a few issues, and I do believe it has to do with the RAM. So in performance mode, you lower all the textures really low, and it does increase your FPS. 
OS. But I have noticed with only eight gigs of RAM, there is an issue where it's really slow to load in textures. Now, I have lowered the meshes down to low, which is what somebody in the comments recommended in a previous video, but that still causes a lot of issues with eight gigs of RAM. So I really do think Fortnite is becoming almost a standard where you need at least 12 gigs or 16 gigs of RAM. And in this system's use case where it came with two four gig sticks, it probably would be easier to maybe pull out a four gig stick and add an eight gig stick or just replace it all with two eight gig sticks, which again, 16 gigs is being closer and closer to becoming the standard if you want to get good performance in gaming. But that doesn't mean the game's unplayable. And after loading into a couple of matches, it looked like the textures were slowly loading in faster. I don't know if it was being cached or something, but just on the first couple of drops, it was really slow. So that's something to keep in mind. Next up in Chivalry 2, which is one of our favorite games right now on low settings, we averaged a little over 50 FPS, most of the times in the 60s, but a few dips here and there. Chivalry 2 is a demanding game, and the fact that we're really, really pushing this RX 460 to its limits, uh, as you can see with MSI Afterburner pinging at over 100%, um, getting over 60 FPS on a newer title like this is actually pretty good. The fact that the RX 460 only has two gigs of VRAM is really gonna hold it back in newer games, and this is no exception. And, and also that eight gigs of RAM is gonna hold it back. No matter what you all might say, eight gigs of RAM has its limitations, especially if you have some background tasks open, because a lot of games are taking up four, five, six gigs of RAM, leaving only two gigs for Windows, which is not gonna work very well and cause some performance issues. But I would say Chivalry is a playable game, even at 30 FPS. Chivalry is not a game that requires very Twitch-like reactions, so you can have a good experience at 30 FPS, believe it or not. Next up in a game that does require a lot of Twitch-like reaction speeds, Apex Legends, and on low settings, we averaged around 60 FPS with a few dips here and there. This is where we start to see where this system is, well, not very capable for higher end games. Again, it's a $250 PC in 2021. We could have done a lot more a few years ago if the market was better, but again, it's a $250 PC in 2021. Um, and it can play games like Apex Legends. You could lower down to 720p or like 1600 by 900 and probably get lock 60 fps but for the sake of testing and having some consistency we decided to stick with 1080p for testing apex legends next up in rainbow six siege with the built-in benchmark tool on low settings we average 123 fps this pc is perfectly fine for games like fortnite rainbow six siege rocket league uh valorant which we'll talk about here in a second um all these esports titles league of legends that's one i just thought of wow all those games this pc is perfectly fine for so if you're somebody wanting to get into the pc space don't want to spend a ton of money on well a high-end rig or overspin on the scalper market right now, then this might be a decent option for you picking up an RX 460. But again, tamper your expectations a little bit. This thing isn't going to be playing all the latest AAA titles at high settings. And last but certainly not least is Valorant, which of course is going to run perfectly fine. On high settings, you get 144 FPS. I mainly really tested this game just to kind of recap this video and prove what this PC is actually for. People wanting to play esports titles and lower end games, but you can play newer games on really, really low settings at 720p if that's something you want to do, but don't expect an amazing experience. In terms of upgrades for this thing, if you really, really wanted to upgrade this, you could get something like an i7-4790, which we will be testing in another PC coming up on the channel very soon, and you could add up to 16 gigs of RAM, but other than that, it kind of is what it is. I wouldn't upgrade the GPU much because we are pushing that power supply to the limits using that SATA the 6-pin adapter, but really, it's more of a get this PC now, use it for a year or two, and once you save enough money or the market gets better, just buy an all-new system and donate this thing to charity or, well, give it to a a younger sibling who may want to get into PC gaming for the first time because it's a fun little piece of hardware to play around with and I always love doing these super cheap PCs to see how much performance we can actually push with such a small budget. So overall, I'm incredibly happy with this PC build for the money. Never thought I could be able to do a $250 PC in 2021, but we actually pulled it off. How are we bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick? Okay guys, so as you saw, for $250, you really can't do any better than this right now. It can play pretty much any esports title you throw at it. It's not going to be ideal for games like Call of Duty Cold War or Warzone, but if you don't care too much and you want to play games like Valorant, Rocket League, CSGO, Valorant, did I say Valorant already? I probably already did. I said it again. You can definitely play Valorant. Uh, this RX 460 is definitely capable. The main thing holding it back is the 2 gigs of VRAM, and that i5 is actually the bottleneck in some games, especially when we're playing Fortnite on performance mode. But over 60 FPS most of the time, and uh, really for $250, I can't complain. So links in the description down below will be affiliate links and they will help us out. Some of them are eBay links just to the generic listing. So you will have to do some deal hunting yourself, but that's part of the fun. 
So if you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out our other YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye! And hey, in case you didn't know, you don't have to go on eBay and buy one of these systems and build it yourself. We actually have a PC selling business, PCBros.tech. PCBros.tech, as Jackson just mentioned. It's a great website. We build PCs. We sell them to you all at decent prices. Link down below. Support us. Buy some PCs. Great hardware. Come see us.